Julie and Clary. Afternoon delight, it's Edith Bowman. And their captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, making a Rover's return, it's Sally Lindsay. Jordy boy, Dave John. And their captain, Dave Spikey. Now, here's your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello and welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, research says you have a 1 in 3.5 million chance of being killed by a snake bite, and that figure rises significantly if you're allergic to cider. <laughs> A snail can travel over a razor blade without cutting itself, or to put it another way, sometimes scientists get bored. <laughs> the average man uses 38 sheets of toilet paper every day. The average woman uses almost twice that much, which is fair enough. Women have two bottoms. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Dave's team, what have the nation been talking about this week? I would imagine World Cup. World Cup. Stick him in echo, yeah. you know what I mean? It's been going on a week, no real surprises, but from Sven's tactics. He's a clone, isn't he? The man's a clone. I mean, all right, we threw out we? We threw it to the last 16, but it makes you think, doesn't it? We play Sweden next, so he's got probably Rooney in goal. <laughs> Ulrika up front. I don't know, I'm just guessing. <laughs> but mind, the Germans have been trying to put off, haven't they, with having all that slag and stuff off with Beckham's family, yeah? Yeah, indeed, yeah. Yeah, when they were saying... <laughs> they said that his mother was a 50-year-old, fat-armed peasant who drinks sangria. So she'd be right up Wayne Rooney's street. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and they also, they called the Beckham's children dwarves, which is just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> children. <laughs> So they grow up, then call them dwarves. <laughs> it's just it's calling calling children dwarves. It's a bit like calling a baby. Go goes a baby going, Oi, you bald bastard! <laughs> Baldy! <laughs> Did you see this Julian? They slagged off his family in the Whose family? Well, David Beckham's family have been in in the German press. They've slagged off his family. They've said they're not very nice. It's horrible. Oh, oh well, no, I'm a seaman. <laughs> I went to the World Cup, actually. I went, I went last weekend. The England fans are very well behaved. There was a few Polish fans arrested for make, doing Sieg Heils, because that's illegal in Germany. You're not allowed to do a Sieg Heil. And you can get two weeks in jail for goose-stepping, which isn't a problem for most England fans, because they walk like ducks. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with the Sieg Heiling, did you hail a cab while you were out there? Yeah. Is there two a... arms. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying that about England. Brazil only won one nil. The favourites, five to one favourites. They took Ronaldo off. Did you see that? Took Ronaldo off because he was too fat. <laughs> He's enormous, isn't he? And the coach said, uh, "This is the first step. We've got six more steps now." And I thought, "Well, he'll not get up them." <laughs> you're going to need a chairlift. Get him up them. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the World Cup is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Oh, oh yes, of course it is. Sven Goran Eriksson has lifted the sex ban for England players, despite Colleen McLaughlin's desperate pleas. <laughs> <laughs> a German newspaper this week attacked David Beckham's family. The paper called his sister a pig, said his mother had the smile of a peasant and that his father was nothing more than a kitchen fitter. Beckham was furious. He said he also does bathrooms. <laughs> Steve, what have the nation been talking about this week? The Big, Big Brother. Are what? you a fan? I do watch it, yes. I'm fascinated. They've been in five weeks, which is like more than you get for murder these days, isn't it? So <laughs> it's like... Who's your favourite? Oh, I don't... I sort of love to hate people in it, so Grace at the moment. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I think what she is, is she's no idea um, how unbearable she is. She thinks, really, she's quite a nice person. And, in fact, is... A massive bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you just wish there was somewhere we could all fall up and, and get her kicked out, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> if only we could have a say. <laughs> want them to sort of have sex, that's the thing, isn't it? They get them in the house and they want them to have sex. And then they fuzz it out. <laughs> they fuzz it out? Yeah, they're doing <laughs> it. That's foreplay, isn't it? <laughs> Is that you doing foreplay? 
lovely. Yeah, that's basically how I do it. Waves at woman first. Hello. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. I'm Jimmy Carr. This week they went in with the, the golden ticket. Route. The Kit Kat thing. Yeah. They might shoot the winner through the roof of the Big Brother house in a glass lift, like the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> and it lands on a spike. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they should do is switch the cameras off and don't tell them. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! They, they scratch them out for another eight weeks, and everyone yeah. that gets voted out, they come out. And there's not even a minicab driver there. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with that is it's such a good idea, I'd want to see it on telly. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, are you watching Big Brother? No, I've made an absolute pact not to watch it. I well, I'm know. the same with Corrie. <laughs> 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 I like the celebrity one. Yeah, no, it is, it, is, it is kind of tragic, but that's kind of what I like about it. Is it? Would you ever do it like Celebrity Big Brother? No, I wouldn't fancy that. I wouldn't want to sleep in a sort of dormitory arrangement with <laughs> who knows who next to you. There's no <laughs> fucking chance of running me in there. <laughs> hey, you, might be, you might be innocently eating your Kit Kat right. and, uh, <laughs> and find a ticket, although whether or not you could manage four fingers is anyone's guess. <laughs> I'm violated by a pun. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it a top five talking point? Let's have a look. <laughs> yes, Big Brother is the third most talked about thing this week. When Grace leaves the house, she's most looking forward to having some booze. That shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> What else have the nation been talking about? Is it the Queen's birthday? God bless her. 80 year old. Is that what it is? Yeah, because I saw, I was driving through Windsor and on a roundabout they had a big sheet. Happy 80th. <laughs> <laughs> does she have two birthdays as well? She does, which explains why she looks so fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love her. I'd love her to get to 80 and just get leathered. Show her ass or something. Yeah. See her kind of <laughs> holding the bar up, down in Zambuca shots. All she'll probably do is uh, say thank you very much, have a cup of tea. Go out the back and strangle a pheasant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she enjoys. <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture of her just finishing off a pheasant. Just, going, <laughs> <laughs> just, just clean. looking around, making sure nobody's looking at it. <laughs> 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 Apparently her excuse for it, she said, was he put it out of its misery. I thought they were quite happy living in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Philip says he's going out the back choking a pheasant means something completely different. <laughs> Sean, have you got any birthday message for the Queen? I think she's totally unnecessary. You know, what do we need a Queen for? <laughs> <laughs> what do we need a Queen for? Bees have a Queen, for Christ's sake. <laughs> we don't need a Queen. We're far more sophisticated than bees. And anyway, they get to shag their Queen. We don't get near us. Have you sent a birthday message before? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's one of the biggest stories of the week. The Queen is now 80. To celebrate the Queen's birthday, the Royal Mail has issued a commemorative stamp. A stamp with the Queen's head on it. Where do they get their ideas? <laughs> OK, Sean, your team. What else have the nation been talking about? I think the X Factor style contest for the Tory mayor candidate. That David Cameron is another one of his attention-grabbing scams. All the public can vote for whoever they want to be the uh, Tory candidate stand up against Ken Livingstone. He is amusingly saying it's not a publicity stunt as well. What he's basically saying is, if you live in we're London. so useless we haven't got anyone to beat Ken. So, any nutter out there who fancies it, some tramp sitting there combing his hair with a shoe, you can, <laughs> run, you can run London if you fancy it. He was on our show, actually. He came on our radio show about a month ago, and uh, the, the most interesting thing we found out about him was the fact that if he had to shag one of the girls allowed, it'd be Cheryl Tweedy. <laughs> well, that was a probing interview, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, in fact, you're making him sound bad there, but you asked that question. So. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he just could offered it up. Questions about... Maybe he just offered it up. <laughs> well, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Cheryl Tweedy, I do. You <laughs> think about the X Factor, they have auditions, don't they? So I like the idea of some toothless granny singing Dan Danny Boy while she's banging a tray over her. <laughs> <laughs> you could go, yeah, we want her to run London. For all that. Danny Boy. All the pipes. Ching, 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 ching. <laughs> I'm getting scared of Livingston. <laughs> She sounds all right. <laughs> right, OK. Uh, well, that's your answer. Let's have a look if it's one of the top five most talked about things this Which week. Which means it is. <laughs>
OK, one more to get fingers on buzzers. What else have the nation been talking about this week? They've been talking about, which is, well, on the front page of every paper I've seen, is the soft sentencing by judges. Oh. The naming... Uh, the Sun has been naming and shaming judges, and they're showing pictures of judges, which I don't think is going to work, because, you know, because they've all got 17th-century wigs on. <laughs> they're not going to get a lot of hassle in the street. In fact, the only time they're going to get recognised is if you're facing them in court and you're hardly likely to go, you're that soft judge who gives out all those really lenient sentences. <laughs> and I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> 53 people, is it, since 2000 have been released. They've served, like, five, four, five, six years. And they've been sentenced to life imprisonment. It's like the life of what? Hamster? <laughs> what? Oh, are we sentencing people in dog years? <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, if, if nothing means what it says, if life doesn't mean life and six years doesn't mean six years, you might as well bring back hanging, but it doesn't mean hanging, just means you have to wear a scarf for a while. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what happens to all the crazy judges? With all the mad judges just go like, 30 years! <laughs> Send them it down! Has, it hasn't started, haven't even started yet, Your Honour. 10 years, shut up! <laughs> I 50 years, <laughs> who wants it? <laughs> mad judges! <laughs> See if judges is one of the most talked about things. Yeah. Show us the... Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> 200 judges have been named and shamed for being too lenient. Top of the list was Louis Walsh for letting Lucy Benjamin win Celebrity X Factor. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean, Julian and Edith have three points. Dave, Sally and Dave have two points. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Sean, Julian and Edith, 32% of Brits think Pete Doherty needs what? I think he needs to go to jail, cos he's in court every bloody week. <laughs> he walks out, <laughs> off his face usually, gets into an uninsured, um, you know, untaxed car, crack pipe, a phone in one hand, drives off using his feet. <laughs> oh, what's he like? <laughs> Perhaps he needs a new spoon. <laughs> the amazing thing is, he, he does all this crime and he never gets, never gets put away. He's going to see that bloody lenient judge, that's why. <laughs> He gets arrested so much, right? Every time he buys drugs, he gets arrested. So I think he needs a new dealer. <laughs> <laughs> one, that, one that doesn't phone the police as soon as he leaves the house, going, yeah, I've just sold it to him. Uh, Do you like his music? Uh, I like, used to like his music. I don't like what he's done recently. If you're watching, fuck you. <laughs> She's Radio 1. Good luck selling some records. <laughs> <laughs> 32% of Brits think Pete Doherty needs what? New a bath. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you yes, 32% of Brits think Pete Doherty needs a good bath, and then that bath needs a good clean. <laughs> Dave, Sally and Dave, 90% of doormen say the point of their job is what? Is it mainly opening and shutting doors? <laughs> <laughs> or twatting... <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah! I know. <laughs> Yeah, big London ways. Ten percent of women say that part of their job is to keep them out of prison. The other ten percent didn't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, what, what do you make a doorman? Do you like him? No, not really. Well, there's a doorman at our local pub, and I went for lunch one day with my trainers on, and I went to get something from my car, and came back and he wouldn't let me in because <laughs> it had gone seven. And I wouldn't allow trainers. And you were so celebrity. On the telly? <laughs> I mean, ordinary people, I imagine that happens to, but that's... <laughs> this has happened to a celebrity. <laughs> I will give you that, yeah. No. Give you that. Yes. 90% of doormen think the point of their job is to provide security. The other 10% presumably think they're modelling bomber jackets. <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's five points to Sean's team and four points to Dave's team. The next round is Believe It or Not. I'll give the panellists a simple statement. All they have to do is decide whether they think it's true or false. Dave, Sally and Dave, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. I like being older because I can do what I want whenever I want. Movies are cheaper. My husband is all mine. No more competition from the job. I find in retrospect that I spent a lot of time doing meaningless things for people I didn't really like, for organizations I didn't really believe in. 
I can't get pregnant anymore. <laughs> Some very old people there. Here is your related <laughs> statistic. 31% of over 65s believe that their age gives them the right to behave badly. Is that true or false? That sounds awful, but I think it's true. I think they go, ah, sod it, I'm old, I'm going to moan. 31% of over 65s think they're living in 1944 anyway, don't they? They don't know, are they? And they drive that way as well. That's behaving badly. <laughs> Last time they passed the test was in a Saracen armoured car at El Alamein. <laughs> driving in the road, stickers in the back window, I lost a leg at Dunkirk and all that. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they drive as if they're permanently looking for a parking space. Absolutely, got connected with this woman. <coughs> she was 96 and she did wing walking. You know where they go on a plane, in a stunt plane? When she landed, she had the face of a 16-year-old. <laughs> All the wrinkles had been blown back, <laughs> down her back, and congregated in her knickers. <laughs> I remember driving back from Blackpool once, right? You've lived a life. <laughs> Rock on! And there was an old woman driving the opposite way up the hard shoulder. <laughs> and I stopped and I said, are you all right, love? Is this way to Blackpool? <laughs> No, you've got to all go that way, and then the other side, they all go that way. And she was just, just carried on, Mr. Well, there's that old story or urban myth about an old woman falling her husband up who's coming back on the M65 and saying, be careful, I've just had a report on the, on the radio <laughs> that there's, there's a mad bastard driving the wrong way up the M65. He said, one mad bastard, there's fucking hundreds of <laughs> Oh, it's oh, funny Lord. up north, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they always go shopping on a Saturday dinner time. They've got all fucking week <laughs> to go shopping, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> all week. And you're in a hurry on a Saturday dinner time. They're in the queue with the coupons. And do you take bird's eye? And you take, <laughs> how much is it? One cent five. Give me a two quid. Fuck off. Go on. You, <laughs> Dave. I can't understand why you keep using the word they. <laughs> Okay, 31% of the over 65s believe their age gives them the right to behave badly. True or false? What do you think? I think they think it's true. We all seem to agree on this. You think it's true? Well, I can tell you that the answer is false. Oh, no. Only 3% of pensioners think that their age gives them the right to behave badly. And the three in question are Foggy, Compo, and Clegg. <laughs> okay, Sean, Julian, and Edith, let's have a look at a clip to illustrate your statistic. Well, this Dick Shepherd just about to attempt to go through our special seaside special van. I think it's well and truly on fire now. Here he comes up to the approach. Here he goes, keep the fingers crossed. And he's through! <laughs> well, he's right the way through. The... It is still on fire. And let's see if he's going to get out all right. We're just all keeping our fingers crossed at this stage. The fire seems to be... No, the fire still there underneath the bonnet. They're just at this very moment trying to get him out. Yes, there he goes. They're, trying, they're tipping it up. Still very much on fire, I'm afraid. And they're just trying to pull him out right now. Yes, Dick is, I think, all right in there. Yes, he's definitely all right. I can see Dick moving inside there, so everything seems to be all right. Yes, here he comes. He's all right, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, Dick Shepard. He's made it. A nice round of applause. Well done, Dick. Dick Shepherd. <laughs> you know, people talk about how, like, uh, telly wasn't like it used to be. You know? <laughs> that was a Saturday night. That was a show called Saturday Special. So the highlight of the show was him driving into a removal van on fire. <laughs> that was it. That was the finale of the night. You drive into it and then you crawl out. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your related statistic: 21% of men admit to having done something that put their life in danger in order to impress a woman. <laughs> True or false? Mm -hmm. I think it's false, because I think it's higher. Because I think men think that switching off the PlayStation is putting their life in danger. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, has a man ever done anything to impress you? Um, he did come round to my house driving a Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> that did the trick. Have you? What, have I ever done anything to impress your... women? Watch <laughs> loose women. <laughs> I think the best way is to impress them and take it to a car boot sale. Get anything you want. <laughs> Money's no object. You silver tongue that, that glove, have it. <laughs> There's a dashboard from a Vauxhall Viva there. Take it away, it's yours. 21% of men admit having done something to put their life in danger in order to impress a woman. True or false? It's true. It's true. 
Well, I can tell you that the answer is true. 21% of men have done something to put their life in danger to impress a woman. Once, driving a girl home, I turned into traffic without checking the blind spot properly. Man, she was turned on. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's six points for Sean's team and four points to Dave's team. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. I'm going to give the teams a series of opinion polls and surveys. It's up to them to buzz in and tell me who or what they think came top. Here is your first one. UK's most endangered animal. A unicorn. Because <laughs> I was just thinking the other day, I haven't seen one of them for ages. <laughs> what about the dragon? dragon? I only say that because a mate of mine put an advert in loot advertising a dragon for a laugh. <laughs> right, and this bloke phone him. This dragon, is it, like an, uh, is it like a lizard thing? He went, no, it's a proper dragon and everything. He said, oh, like one of them iguanas, big iguana. He said, no, no, it's a big 20-foot dragon. <laughs> oh, you mean like one of them, uh, one of them kimono dragons? One of them big ones, them kimono dragons? No, it's a proper 20-foot, breathes fire, all that. <laughs> he went, oh, I better leave it then. <laughs> is it Smurfs? <laughs> I've always worried about the long-term future of the Smurfs, because there's, there's only one female Smurf. <laughs> yeah, but she's a slut. <laughs> Is that the right answer? No, it's not the Smurfs. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you the answer. It's the water vole. Water voles have difficulty reproducing, because they can't get it up while Bill Oddie is watching. <laughs> Kids' favourite thing about summer... <laughs> Is it that their knives glint in the sunshine? <laughs> Is it fishing for sticklebacks and then making a fat kid eat it? <laughs> Stop crying! Eat them! Yes, it's a great answer. Yes. <laughs> no, clearly not. Uh, you're mental. I don't think there's anything better that reminds me of summer than setting light to a barn. <laughs> and then standing back, admiring my handiwork from a safe distance while the farmer ran around frantically with buckets of water. It's somewhere you don't have to go. Not having to go to school. Correct answer. <laughs> kids' favourite thing about the summer holidays is no school. Surprisingly, only 1% of kids said their favourite thing about summer was eating ice cream. I guess, once you've tasted methadone, Gino Ginelli can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And that sound tells me it is the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Dave, Sally and Dave have four points, Sean, Julian and Edith have eight points. <laughs> they are the winners. Thank you to our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and that was, that was an old clip of me. That happened in the past uh, when I was funny. I'm still funny now. Come and see me live on tour. Join in. IRL. Yeah, kids. <laughs>